this is perfect so welcome to the advanced chess tutorial so in these games realistically now any mistakes that are made um, need to be the smallest of mistakes that you you know that you can humanly think of. Also, what I want to try and show is the same concept being used throughout all of the different stages the beginner intermediate now we're in the advanced section we're playing advanced level type rating player so and we did play advanced level type players in the beginner stage as well to show the actual system working so this is the advanced level we potentially may touch on additional sort of supporting concept ideas but realistically I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible and the simple idea of removing pieces from the board strategically because at the end of the day if there's no soldiers on the board there, there can't be a war push the pawn here as we always do just keeping it nice and simple we we'll bring that pawn there as we know so that our knight can develop so that this pawn is not going to hassle it probably still does hassle it because he wants the queen to take the queen so that then our king can't go and castle so in those terms they get the 20 pointer but we don't mind that either way yeah, so we do have the option of bringing the bishop here, but then if we do do that, the queen takes the pawn. So this is why the knight is probably better. There are other options. Yeah, we could bring the queen out. There is the knight here. Yep. Yeah. There is the bishop, like we said, but the bishop will hang fire because it can take here. So there's two options, facing the queen with the queen or just bringing the knight out and then getting, letting the opponent get the 20 pointer. I'm going to bring the queen to attack. If he brings the bishop, I suppose we just take it off the board, it's no problems. The idea is attack, 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 uh, keeping it as simple as possible. And I'm hoping you don't see any difference between this game and the beginner level games that we were covering because the concept really is the same. You've got, if you keep it as simple as that then you don't get into complicated lines and you don't have to work out 50 million sort of tactics or ideas or strategies or calculations. The simpler the better. And that's based on my own research, my own evaluations, my own studying. Um, not just a glib idea that I'm mentioning. It's just based on what I've seen does actually work with other players. So let's push the pawn down. So I mean, we can we can take, yeah. Simple capture is trying to control the center as best possible, but just develop the knight now attacking the pawn. He may open up some more pawn space. He's um, developed the knight. Uh, the knight might want to come and jump here 
can we not just push this pawn? It's a simple idea of blocking, basically attacking these squares that the opponent wants to use. But we're not developed yet, so I'd, I'd put I'd put a little bit of an onus on White in this situation. Um, I'm not one for having an immediate impact, you know, in the opening bit, so long as I can try and get my pieces positioned correctly. Let's see if we can go on castle. It's doing like a blocker. I'm actually just castling, keeping it safe. He moved there a bit quick. So the idea is attack, attack, attack. We can't attack here. We could attack in the center. He drops. Could attack this pawn here. He drops. But if we look to attack this knight, get this out of the way, then we potentially can look at the centre here. So let's push forward. Looking to attack a higher piece. So it's an understanding, obviously, that if you can't attack something immediately, that's going to be of benefit to yourself. Look forward a little bit and say, well, what can you attack? So I'm looking to attack a higher piece. He's looking to block off, so I'm giving him something to think about which is a good thing because they've left this pawn uh, kind of unprotected the bishop can actually come off developing and attacking again maybe he might push but I don't think he wins out in the center on that side so I'm quite comfortable with that so I'm forcing him potentially to do something he doesn't want to do either going there or pushing the pawn down push the pawn down we potentially could challenge it here those are options there's no rush it's like a 20 minute and 5 second game so slow incremental development I don't think I've kept it's not keeping tension this bit here has kept tension but in those terms there it's not about not making an appropriate move so yes we've made them go back to attack you know defend this pawn here and as we mentioned we were going to look at just pushing this pawn up so following those simple options I'm not having to overthink because I'm doing my one step calculation and his knight has eventually moved and that might be the saving grace for the situation now okay so finding the right move it could physically capture, but the bishop takes. It could push, but it could push down. Could push, but again, could push down. Could push, it could capture. Could capture. Rook captures, rook captures in the file on the end but it could also just push past so I'm going to go for this one it looks a little bit better for me feels like if they do capture and it's just push past so we know the we know the ilk of the player the player wants to keep tension that's fine and where ones to try and break that tension so we're going to go with the other option of pushing here if they want to keep the tension and if he pushes down yep <laughs> nothing new there just bring the knight around okay 
So I'm hoping they're going to pay the price because we're the ones wanting to break the tension. So we'll find a way through. If we didn't want to break the tension and we were happy with tension, then it'd end up being a draw. So I'm going to push forward. Could go on pass on, but invariably because they want to keep the tension and it is a passed pawn in a sense, it's got the bishop and the bishop blocking its passageway. I don't think they're going to do that. No, exactly. <laughs> but we want them to pay the price for not breaking the tension. Let's bring the rook through here. I know you can see what I'm trying to do, which is push this pawn up. I'm just wondering if his his um, rook is late to the party. I'm pushing it anyway. Because we've got three pieces on there. We'd have to move his bishop to get another one on, but by that time we can take. We're the ones looking for that break. We don't want the tension. And that's the smallest of differences in understanding this play. Not saying we're winning, but we're attempting to break this tension. The further up you go, more advanced, like we're playing 1800 here. Um, there is a lot of this, let's keep the tension type thing. The bishop's now moved, as expected. And there, we do have options. We can take or we can push onto this pawn, putting more pressure, advancing our pawn even more. I think pushing is even better because it is like a, a past pawn in a sense and he's not wanting to play any of that game. Uh, eventually, they've actually taken. But what they don't realise is they've linked up two pawns here. So these are basically, basically like rooks these two yeah like a rook sorry one rook all because they wanted to keep tension and now they're paying the price I believe and I'm hoping so we can get these driven up and even if we don't get these driven up it's going to distract the opponent so much away from their king area that we can hopefully do some devastation towards their king get the knight moving attacking this pawn also looking to do some major support coming this side if, it, if it's not allowed maybe the bishop comes and defends but at least it's got movement now to be able to move upwards to help support the movement of these pawns and block this pawn as well because that's pretty dangerous So it's definitely an attack mode now. Smaller piece attacking a higher piece. Simple, direct, to the point. There's a situation here that's look not looking too favorable for them at the minute. Like we said, we wanted the knight potentially to come across here. We do have this attack on here, but I'm holding on to that one because the rook can still come here and block the... But now we've got the knight here, he's not going to do that, so it's almost trapping the rook. So, because the bishop's gone back, we can attack the rook now, like we said. And it doesn't really have a safe square to go to because it gets taken either way. All because the opponent wanted to keep tension. And we said right at the very beginning, the one that breaks that tension is usually the one that 
wins out. I'm not saying we're winning, but I'm feeling very confident about it. So he has dropped. Is there a problem with my knight taking that rook? His knight takes back. His knight takes back. Our bishop could come back and attack the rook. Well, come this way and attack the rook. And then it's support and then the knight doesn't get it for free. So looking ahead a little bit, I think if we go here, attacking the rook, does he escape? One, two, could escape. Hmm. If he escapes though, we can push the pawn, can't we? Push the pawn up. Push the pawn up. The only one that can attack it is the knight. If the knight does, the knight takes with a fork on the rook, but then his rook can take. But then we've got our rook here. Gonna keep it simple. That's going too far. I mean, that's like 50 million calculation moves, and he's not forced to do any of them. So let's keep it simple. Simple is a simple does. Simple attack on the knight because we don't want the knight there. We really want these pawns linked so we can push them up. Simple methodology so far. I am worried about he's got two bishops, but at the minute they don't seem to be very active. Seems to be blocked off here. Can't really go anywhere. And he's blocked off there, so he can't really go anywhere. So it's not too much trouble apart from, excuse me, it can come here. But there's nothing on it on the target zone for them, so I can focus a little bit on these pawns until something bad happens and they get whipped off. But so generally speaking, this is the same type of stuff that we do at the beginning level always think back to having a good solid basis for um, your chess play as far as I can see if your base base is good we can push now if your base is good then there's not, not going to be any issues when you're going further up into the um, different levels but if you've got basic sh shaky sort of beginnings such as just studying the standard openings you know the Sicilians and Idols, they all that type of stuff. You know the Kings Indians, and you're just studying those types of things, and you're not studying how to play the game yourself, as you as a human, you as a single individual person. You're not going to be able to bring your own flavour to the game, so you'll be playing games that are hundred years old and trying to play like those players back then. So what I'm saying is utilize what you know within the game when I look back on this now and I do an evaluation it will show me what type of opening somebody has played like this before you know might say well it was like a scotchy type thing you know or something like that you might say it's a king's Indian it might say it's some sort of special opening but I don't know because I don't play those openings what I play is what is on the board that's what I play against Don't know if I've made myself clear or not, but um, I'm trying. It's nice that people have got the names based on openings, but it's not nice that you know beginners, intermediate level, advanced levels um, attempt to mimic those those plays as if they're the law. They're not the law. They give you the ideas about how to manoeuvre within a game. His knight's taken because there's pressure with that. So we're just simply going to grab because we want to own the file. So he's done calculation. He's moving really fast now. It's like um, he's been given permission to 
zoom down with his own two pawns. He's only got one rook, so we could x-ray through. We do like the x-rays. Yeah, we do like the x-rays. We've been practicing the x-rays. Um, when I see them done on the higher level games, um, I think they're quite amazing. So he's pushed past. That gives us the opportunity to push our own pawn. And then that's basically potentially putting pressure on his rook and the king. So you might see that type of situation. Even then we still can push the rook here, attacking his rook. So then probably potentially then getting a queen. So he may bring the bishop here so that then he's challenging this square. At least. Smallest of details but I can move fairly quickly because it, there's obvious movements here to be made. Yes there's pressure here but there's not enough pressure to say well I need to bring all my army down to protect. I've got the bishop blocking here, got the rook blocking here. And White has resigned. So I'm hoping that was a good example to show of advanced level play, advanced level thinking and keeping the same concept as we have right from the beginning all the way through to the intermediate, all the way through to advanced level. If you keep it the same, this same concept, um, you're not going to go far wrong and you're going to start being more individual in your own games. Twenty minute five second game. So let's try and utilize all the learning. Let's push through the center, attacking a piece. Let's keep with that methodology and just capture back. She's gone for the Fiancetto attack on the knight. The queen is protecting at the moment. Could look to develop our bishop out. So we can go and castle with no messing. Let's just bring the bishop out. So in the advanced section, we're looking at simple direct moves to remove pieces from the ball strategically. Sound like a broken record. That's because it's a simple concept. The more advanced you are, it's all about learning better ways of doing simple moves simple direct moves to get pieces off the board so that's what it's all about starting from the beginning we learn basic ideas of how to do it to get used to the pieces in the intermediate we then looked at a little bit more um, maybe strategy a bit of more calculation to get pieces off the board for a better position for ourselves in the advanced section it's about maintaining what you've learned in the interim period not any further calculation I think one one to four is probably about good enough and then rest in your brain and then it's just about experience then about finding out what realistically are the right ones to get you in a better position for your end game which tactics although I'm not a tactics man which tactics will allow you to get those stronger positions on the board. So I better not talk too much because I might scare the person off. And um, go and castle king safety. So again, king safety is a key element to the whole process of simple direct moves.
because what I found is it's how you react to what the opponent does that makes them more advanced so if you're playing a higher rated player like I'm playing a higher rated player here it's how I react to what they do okay so let's see if we can practice this advanced level stuff Play 1898. So we say advanced, it puts pressure on the whole being of playing the game now because we're saying advanced, so we're expecting some miraculous magical moves to come bouncing out onto the screen. And that is one key thing that I've knocked out of my head straight away. It doesn't matter what grade you are, it's the quality of your play. It's simple as that. And what we're trying to do is improve our quality of play so that we can enjoy the game a lot better. So we've got the four night situation going on here. I like to just go and get ready for castling. As we know, nice and simple, king safety first. So the opponent moved dead quick then, but we do like this move. We've been practicing this move for a while now. Just capturing the pawn here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Right, there's no need for that, is there? So obviously his knight's coming down. It's not actually come down. It's just gone for an exchange for an exchange. Okay. So a smaller piece can attack a higher piece. Push through the centre. They'll move dead quick there. A smaller piece attacking a higher piece can't be wrong. So we'll keep pressuring, pressing onto the knight here. So bless it now, this knight has had to go all the way back. So I'm looking to castle safely, so I just want to get my king to safety. Although nothing can trouble it at the minute, but you know, you don't want to keep your, your king hanging there. Potentially just to bring it here. Because it is advanced level and you know they're just do coming out with some crazy stuff now so he's attacking the king this is why we wanted to move the king here so we've got it castled that's what they call castling by hand or virtual castling yeah. just getting the king to safety so he's developing the knight again so he's lost tempo there so again a smaller piece attacking a higher piece I was thinking bishop here there's nothing supporting Bishop here, this pawn can attack the queen just to shoo it away. If it hides in the corner here, then we can go here like this. So again, it's got single piece attacks going, but I'm not going to say much more than that because they are <coughs> they are advanced level players, so all we can do is try and circumvent what we believe are weak areas by using the smaller piece attacking a higher piece and attacking pieces where we can. So 
So the queen in its own right almost feels like it's kind of trapped. So if it goes there, the bishop takes. If it goes there, if it goes here, then it's trapped. If it goes there, it's trapped. So the only place it can go is here. And that's where the bishop is probably going to come and put a little bit of a check on it. So it, it looks like it's trapped itself from working so fast. So it is trapped, so it's taken a higher P, well, a rook in a sense, so. But this is demonstrating um, that the system does work. We didn't do anything special at all. The opponent gave us the, those positions and we attacked them with small little pawns and they actually trapped their own queen themselves. We didn't do anything special. So they've castled. Well, we do have options, bishop can come here to attack the knight. If he pushes down then the pawn takes, opening up space around the king. Don't really see a problem with that, his knight can boom around though and come and attack this pawn here. Then this pawn can push up but then this pawn's getting attacked. Uh, I still feel like developing so that gives space for my rook to move. And what did we say? It's going to attack here. To there. It's not doing that. So he's given up his knight. Okay, let's capture it. We went there to do that, so we may as well. Moving way too fast, way too fast. Could double up on this pawn with the queen, bring the queen here, just doubling up on here because the only thing that's protecting is the bishop at the moment. Let's do that, simple, nothing arty, nothing grand. It's giving up the bishop, okay. Small piece attacking a higher piece. Pawn, just simply take this pawn out of the way. Don't need it winning a tempo. Grabs back. This knight's got no protection on it. The queen can come quite nicely here to put pressure on it, but then it gets supported. But then we're attacking the pawn this way. Knight could attack this pawn, gets defended. But if we did that, he'd take this pawn here, so let's knock that one on the head. Rook could come and attack the knight. Bring the rook and attack in the knight, get it into the game, stuck in the corner there by itself. He's just moved himself just to safety. Mm. Small piece could attack, but then his knight comes down to here, attacking this pawn. This pawn looks a little bit shabby, doesn't it? Looks like it's going to get hit from both sides, from both the rook and the knight. Hmm. Let's bring the knight up so that we can join up this pawn. Because it's going to get hit. Oh! Damn. All of them, though. If he takes, then we get his rook. Nearly had heart attack then. Ah, so he's uh, spotted that, okay. So he's going for the exchange. I'm not sure I'm a player in this position with the material they've got that would be going for an exchange, but I'm going to capture. Trade down, once your material up really, If we go 
here attacking the rock and the pawn. He comes down, puts a check on us. We go here. He's he can't then attack these pawns here. If we go there. Although hold on a minute, I've still got this pawn here. Let's just do this. I don't see why we should give him a, a pawn for free. It's gone across. I don't really know what that's meant to achieve. The queen can come and put a check here, and then we can support the pawn by taking the pawn here. So that's all pretty simple and straightforward stuff. So his knight's now attacking our queen. We've got options, we can go back and attack the knight or just push this, well, take this pawn, we let the rook take here. Mm. Just come down here. It's attacking this pawn. Maybe once we get this pawn pushed up a bit, supported by this pawn, we might be able to take this one. Uh, if we push there his rook can go up and put a check on our king so we might not want to do that just yet maybe move the king first I don't know, let me see, let me see I might be overthinking this. What can the knight do then? We can take this pawn. Don't want to be greedy, do I? Could challenge his knight. See if his knight wants to come out of the game. Attack a piece, attack, attack, attack. Once I find an attack, then I can actually take it, which is a benefit to me, I think. So it's, getting, it's reducing down. So hopefully it's going to make it harder for my opponent now to fight with a rook against the queen. Whereas the flexible knight can cause a little bit of a problem. So king can come maybe just to attack it. Let's attack it. Yeah, this definitely give up chess now really. I'm gonna move the king off of the line now so that we can move this pawn up. So a bit at a time, I'm just taking a step at a time. We want to move this pawn up so we can, our queen can take this pawn. So his rook has gone to that position, so we can now take the pawn. No problems there. Yes, it might look easy. Yeah, just um, because I've got a queen, but I think you still have to box clever. Uh, if we go for this pawn, or we can just push these pawns up now, can't we? I'm 
so we can just do that mm -hmm. queen does have access to this pawn putting checks on this king could take this pawn getting rid of quite a lot of stuff could push up Rook can put a check on us. The Queen's still protecting this pawn here, so we can keep pushing, I think. Mm -hmm. What is best to do? Push this one. Queen here, then keep pushing this one up. Seems a long winded approach, but why try and go for something fancy? Unless, of course, he gives it to me on a plate. Uh, da, 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 da. If we go into the corner here, he's not going to touch us. Got this pawn protecting from that, then we can push this pawn up open up the space around this king if he's going to give it to me i'm focused on these pawns here just slowly just inching them up a bit at a time i'm just going to push here like we said this pawn can deal with this pawn coming down and the queen can squeeze in here just to look after these pawns and then this pawn can start pushing up well push up as far as it can because I'm sure the rook won't just let it go and get promoted. The queen does have access to the king, it can actually move across here looking to basically because it could block the queen from actually moving to this square so it wouldn't be able to get to that square. Then it could take this pawn here and just check it. But I'm leaving that one, I'm keeping that in my back pocket. Yeah. If his rook starts doing something crazy, then I'll I'll do that move. So I'm bringing the queen here, supporting these pawns, like we said, and looking to push this one up. And obviously, the rook is going to come across here. thinking is that rook move actually going to stop me from getting my queen up to here and then going down he's, ah, he's beating me to see that he's beating me to the punch bringing the king across okay well, like we said just push the pawn can expect the rook to just slide over now to it's not doing that, it's getting the king involved. We'll just keep pushing because we do have a check now here with our king, queen, sorry, on the king. So if the rook did come to stop this pawn, obviously we get a check and then we get a queen and we get his rook off. But, but he's not doing any of that. They never do anything that I say, do they? Going for the check, like we said, this pawn can block that off. And he's quickly taken. So we could take with the uh, king, but then his rook comes across. Puts the check on. Uh, I suppose we could come back. Could take with the queen, queen gets the check on. Oh, and then we, oh yeah, well that's pretty sa plain sailing, isn't it? Queen comes here with a check, king moves, and then we get that promoted, the queen promoted. Yeah. So, grab there, and then push here for a, a promotion.
it's going for give up chest now so it's looking for those stalemate things so we've got to be careful let's grab and they've resigned for the benefits of what we were going through let's have a quick look let's put the tool on okay so we developed the knight came through attacked the pawn developed the bishop and we do like this movement capturing here but then they did this move here which I really wouldn't have expected from an advanced player because we've covered this type of movement in the beginner level I really didn't expect that so we push through smaller piece attacking a higher piece and then again chasing the knight away with a smaller piece and then castle by hand virtual castling and then smaller piece attacking a higher piece but the opponent actually gave us the queen it trapped their own queen because the queen had nowhere to go so that's why I'm a bit surprised a high level player just throwing the pieces out so after that I think the rest is just capture capture looking for a nice position capturing all pretty straightforward stuff nothing special supporting the port on and we've got the advantage too much there so I won't go any more onto that using the concepts of attack 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 oh we're waiting for the opponent it's a 45 minutes and 15 second game so it's a lot longer now so we can hopefully break down and analyze while we're playing the game So the idea is attack, 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 where possible, if it's of benefit to us. Does capture, and because now the knight can't come here to defend the pawn, we can take with our queen. Ordinarily we would take with the knight because then the knight would come and attack the queen But the knight can't do that now, so I think we can freely take with the queen And as always the arrows that I'm using they're not assistive tools These are for the tutorial side of the videos to basically highlight the four processes Some people are visual so it helps them to understand what I'm thinking about in terms of seeing it on the board others are you know verbal they're audio they like to hear it audially so it's trying to cover a wide range of learning abilities and learning styles so our process is attack 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 it looks like they're giving us a free pawn well not a free pawn but something to take so I'm not into keeping the tension we could push past but then he's got a pass pawn as well or semi pass pawn so let's just grab and keep it simple we're not looking at doing anything fancy we don't really want to get into anything tactical um, and we want to try and avoid giving tactics to the opponent especially as we're sort of progressing our the quality of our play it's not about the rating thing for us it's about looking at the quality of the play and if you're consistently improving the quality your rating will go up so for this whole series from beginner intermediate through to the advanced we've got one concept which is basically simple direct moves to take pieces off the board strategically so that the opponent doesn't have any armory to actually attack us with to try and get checkmates on us so they've captured gives space for the bishop to attack the king the mainstay piece on the board and as
as we've said let's just take pieces off the board where it's of benefit to us king safety is a key element to the whole game so we can go on castle that makes sense and now the knight can attack the queen we do have this open king here and we do like to put checks on the kings before he actually thinks he can go on queenside castle so we might as well do that he does have blockers his knight or his bishop can come here to block that off So he still may be able to go on Queenside Castle. Do we have anything else that we potentially can attack? We could open up the Dark Square Bishop, which probably would be attacking the Rook. But then they drop the pawn here. And bring the Bishop back to this diagonal. If it goes past five moves, then really it might not be a good science. So it's brought the Knight out. So our queen is still under attack from then their knight. So it looks like he may get away with the queen side castling. Unless of course our queen blocks his passageway. If we went here, let's just do the arrows before we move. If we went here, we're blocking. Although we're not really, you know, because he can still it's only if it blocks the king's passageway that he won't be able to so it's only blocking the rook's passageway something to be mindful of i've seen this type of situation before in over the board matches and arguments have ensued because the opponent's gone you can't castle because you've you know you you have blocked your way but in essence they can but if he did go our queen will be able to take this pawn because it's unprotected. I'm going to bring the queen here. There's nothing worse than somebody trying to stop your king from getting to a safe place. it's not stopping it he can still do it but we we are potentially going to be taking this pawn here and he has gone so we'll take the pawn it's no point deliberating over that we've covered that i've had a look to see if there's any threats no major threats so he's looking for the exchange now with the queen it's a discover check on our queen so we can just simply take that off the board now we are one tiny pawn up <laughs> in my eyes that doesn't make a right lot of difference in terms of position on the board now he looks like he's a little bit more developed than us so we need to get developed a bit so the rook can come here with a check looking to win a bit of a tempo for ourselves it's come back dead quick this is a 45, 45 minute 15 second game so probably maybe they could have taken some time to think of that we're going to reduce down so that gives us opportunities to actually attack the king area just come and attack that's the whole idea attack attack and hopefully you're starting to see that I am using the same concept right from the beginner level through to the intermediate through to the advanced level there's nothing different about it um, I'm not mentioning I'm not saying I'm doing any particular type of opening because the main thing is I'm dealing with what is actually happening on the board and making hopefully appropriate moves to be as direct as possible to remove pieces from the board strategically so that it's to my benefit and that's as simple as it gets so there's no difference 
it's just a matter of applying it and applying it and applying it. The shock factor against higher level players is really quite surprising because it is such a simple concept. So brought the knight across. Our rook is a little bit dormant at the moment. We could take the knight, but is it to our benefit in that sense? Reducing down because we've got one pawn up. <laughs> um, I'm going to capture. I'm going to stick with the um, ethos of the game. And the strategy. So his bishop does take. So I'm going to open up our rook a little bit. Attacking this pawn at the same time. I don't know if the pawn can be defended now because if it drops the knight takes, if it stays there then that knight takes. The dark square bishop is a dark square bishop so he can't actually defend. The, oh, his knight can come here to defend. But then the small pawn will attack. But then I suppose the knight can put a check on our king. Maybe the king then can challenge. And then that'll be all she wrote for that knight I think. So that's potentially what could happen. We'll see if that takes place. How many moves is that? We said maximum four. If it goes over that then <laughs> so that's one, two, three, oh four. Yeah, maximum four. Uh, he's not actually gone for that, so the knight can probably just take this pawn. And attack the bishop. So plus two now at the moment, but as you know, it's not about material gain for me, it's about position on the board. So we need to be looking maybe to support the rook with a discovered check. We can capture this bishop. I don't think we'd need to delay. Let's just capture that. And slide the rook across just for a little bit of a check. And it's not saying we're winning. We're plus two, but we've got the same sort of pieces. He's got a rook, he's got a knight. And so these two pawns could be easily taken off the board if we don't play correctly. I don't like these types of positions. Yep. Because the knights are on the board. We've got rooks. So you have to play it exact. If he wants to trade down, then we've got plus two pawns. I'm a happy man. We will trade down, no problem. But if he wants to get all clever, that's where we might have a bit of an issue. Could just bring the king here to settle things or where's his knight potentially can come here potentially can come there maybe we'll push this pawn just to stop that action mm -mm. maybe we attack this pawn So that's what these longer games are for to actually allow you to put a little bit more effort in. Could stop the knight pushing the pawn here. Also freeze up a I'm gonna I might do that after I've done this. Depends what he wants to do next. If he trades off the rooks then I think we're happier. But it may just come to defend, but then at least he's been held to ransom holding this pawn. Could always just come and attack our rook, but then we'd take the pawn here, but then maybe he's coming to look to own the file to try and come down for background checkmate, which allows us to do this move here, which stops the knight from doing this. So that's a few there, that's one, two, three, four again. Okay, nice one. Maximum four. Okay, so it's coming down for the background checkmate, but the, our rook, our knight is covering this square. So he's not really going to get away with that. So we could actually just take the pawn. So 
So now he's moved to the far side looking for the background checkmate. And we could, as we said, push the pawn to stop the knight and uh, get the king up a little bit. I think we'll do that. We'll stick with what we covered in our calculation of the four. So it's kind of panning out in that sense. Our rook does have the knight now. He does have a tempo win-ish, but up we go. Then where does his rook go from there? Goes behind maybe to attack these pawns. But then he loses his knight. So he's now got to weigh up the pros and cons of all that situation. Does his knight come here for safety? Or there? Probably there. Because if he goes there, then this rook can't come down because the rook can still take with a check on the king. Okay, that'll do for calculation. We can also go here. Oh, and he has to. Alright, so how do we develop? Could just move the king up, keep it safe. Don't want to be too fancy, just keep it safe. We, we Logically, the rook's not going to come here, but like we say, it could come down to the bottom here, just to start troubling these pawns. Oh. Knight attacking the rook. Rook, yeah, just come here. I don't even need to think about that one. That's like a... Is it a skewer? It's not a pin, it's a skewer, isn't it? Because you're in between two pieces. Oh, nice one. Very nice. Ah. Very nice indeed. So we could win a tempo. We could actually go and grab the pawn, but I'm going to try and win a tempo here. I'm trying not to allow the opponent to grab pawns back. This is why I don't like these sort of, um, you know, these materials on the board. Like I said, he's got a knight, he's got a rook. You have to really box clever with this sort of position. Okay, so it's moved. So the rook is now protecting this pawn. We could push on to the knight. We push on to the nut. Do you know? I mean, he can come back here and then block our rook. Mm. Although we do have that. Yep. Yeah. So if we pushed on to his knight, he's going to think he's fancy going there. We can then push here. I suppose he, his pawn can push there. Okay. I'm going to push onto the knight. Smaller piece attacking the higher piece. Sticking with the... Um, sticking with the whole concept. Because it brought the rook here, putting a major check, we believe, onto the king. And his knight's gone the other way. He's not blocked us, so that means we can take this pawn without much trouble now. So, removing pieces from the board strategically, we've got to just, we're doing that as you can see, the less pieces on the board the opponent's got, the less chance that they're able to get a checkmate on us. And there's probably other ways of working it, but I like to work the way of getting as many pieces off the board as possible, um, not being fancy, we're trying to go for a checkmate type thing. If it's on the on the plate, then we'll go for it. Um, Could have a little outpost here for this with this pawn. So if I push this pawn here, it all looks very delicate, but I'm just trying to block <laughs> his rook's access um, that way. 
maintain a little bit of a presence here in the centre also releasing these pawns to be to get oh no oh no oh dear it happens it happens oh dear he's just given up the rook I don't know if he forgot that the knight was protecting the square it does happen it happens quite a lot that type of stuff so I'm quite pleased that it has happened because it's less work for us now so we can start pushing these pawns up Ah, oh, that's a shame okay so the knight's gonna come and do some devastation looking for pawns all over the place so I'm gonna keep pushing this one up to distract the knight and the king just keep pushing them up and let's just keep them together linked pawns are a bit of a trouble for a king especially and then we can go over the, to the other side now to grab this pawn here and then just keep these pawn, whoops, keep these pawns linked just keep pushing them up just keep pushing he could get a stalemate but I'm trying my hardest not to get a stalemate because he's got a knight that can move anywhere and just keep pushing these pawns and we could go to this one here that's not a stalemate type thing he comes round the back there must be a move order thing of some sort let's go here with a check on the king so it actually gets a check on uh, so it's gone to the other side so I mean we can go here because the rook is protecting that one and checkmate so that was a very interesting game in that I'm putting into the advanced level section I know the opponent's 1661 but um, I did put in for the rating range higher than mine um, all the way up to the 2000 region so this person accepted the game um, so simple direct moves to remove pieces from the board strategically as we always do sort of look at the analysis of this one put the tools on okay let's break it down so knight attacking the pawn pawn attacking the pawn queen attacking because the knight can no longer um, attack the queen capturing the pawn attacking the king putting checks on usually is quite useful most of the time there are nugatory checks on kings so you have to be mindful of those as well checks on kings that really don't give you much of a benefit um, they're very few and far between but you have to be careful when you think oh I'm going to put a check on the king does it really improve your position you could save it for a later a later move um, put it in your back pocket um, while you're developing your other pieces and then bring it out because it's got support with other pieces so then we capture the bishop gauge bar is showing us in favour at the moment so we castled and then we like these checks on the kings here to prevent them from castling and we brought our queen across here just to prevent the queen, uh, king uh, prevent the castling process but then realised that oops it's not blocking the king's passageway if they castled so they would still be able to castle but that we did have this pawn here if they went so they did so we captured and then they had a discover check with their queen so we captured and then the rook had space to put a check on their king so all these are pretty obvious movements not looking for anything grand and we captured and then again putting a check on the king capturing keeping in the mainstay of what we're talking about capturing if it's beneficial to us we were plus one pawn so we took that as well we're winning but we wanted to improve our position on the board because our rook is stuck in the corner so we developed the knight out attacking the pawn attacking again attack 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 the opponent pushed their pawn down so we could capture the pawn brought their bishop down so we could capture the bishop no tension involved whatsoever i think there was hardly any tension in this game we don't want tension yeah we want to be the ones to break the tension so that we can strategically reduce the armory that the opponent has got to be able to attack us with and this is case in point in this particular game putting a check on the king now 
attacking a piece again attacking a piece because the rook uh, couldn't come and put a check on our king because our knight is protecting the key square giving our king a flight square now pressure on the knight so potentially the tempo wouldn't, wouldn't have been right for the opponent bringing our king to safety a key thing yeah just because we've got more material on the board does not mean you go blasting out there trying to get a checkmate make sure that your bed's nice and comfy your house is all sorted before you then go out and um, start going for checkmate ideas so we've had a nice little skewer type situation here with the knight but then I thought I don't really want to give um, the opponent any extra pawns so I put a check on the king and then went for the knight small piece attacking a higher piece can't be wrong and that allowed us to actually go across and uh, capture the pawn here so at this stage here now developing looking to give my my knight a little bit of a outpost just to block the rook from coming down and they must have forgotten that the ninja knight was there when they brought the rook down because you can see what they were trying to do which was come and attack this pawn here and it does happen so you have to be mindful of that the placement of your pieces so we captured and then just started basically pushing the pawns up as you can see the gauge bar showing that okay so again just being careful with the pawns pushing up because you don't want to get a stalemate position after you've done all this hard work so looking at appropriate movements with the pawns like I said I thought he was going to come into the corner here but he went the other way I'm not sure if it would have made much difference let's just have a look so if he had gone there then get the queen and checkmate so it wouldn't have made any difference so yeah that was a nice, I think that was a nice example um, to finish off the advanced tutorial section simple direct moves to remove pieces from the board strategically with no soldiers your opponent cannot create a war